Hi, I'm Jeff Gonzalez, president of Trident Concepts, and today I'm here with Brownell's Daily Defense to talk to you about rifle zeroing procedures for your red dot sight. So at some point, you may invest in a red dot sight, and there's a lot of different red dot sights out there. Right now, I'm running with a Aimpoint T2. The nice thing about these red dot sights is that for the distances that we're gonna be looking at for a defensive rifle usage, this is gonna be more than adequate. I like it, it's nice and small, it's light, it's easy to work with, it really works well in the high stress environments that you're probably gonna be playing in. So let's talk a little bit more about the red dot sight. First, before we leave our house, we wanna do a little preparation. Making sure that I've installed the optic correctly, review the owner's manual to understand how to work the potential uh, corrective values that you might have to use. Each manufacturer has their own way of doing it, so make sure you study that up in advance. After that, after we've done our prep work, after we've ensured everything is good to go and we make it to the range, the next thing we wanna talk about is like, what zero range do I want to use? This is where there's a lot of different theories, a lot of different ideas, but I will tell you that one thing that will govern them all is what do you have available? If you have a 25 yard only, then you're more than likely going to be zeroing your rifle at the 25 yard line. Sure, you can adjust for point of aim, point of impact to simulate those ranges that are outside the 25, but unless you actually shoot at those distance, it's merely theoretical. So if you have access to a 25, a 50, or a 100, now you can really start to evaluate whether it is in your best interest to use one of those zeros. For the most part, in a defensive rifle situation, all of the uh, um, practice zeros, such as the 50, the 100, and the 200, are going to do you really well. But if you have no choice than to use a 25-yard range, then the 25-yard zero is one that you're going to want to play with to understand the various holds at those other distances. Now, once I have figured out what zero distance I'm going to use, I need to make sure that I understand the corrective value. Here, this T2 has a half minute at 100 yards, which means if I'm at the 100 yard line and I need to move the bullet's impact one inch, I'm gonna need to make two clicks to give me that one inch. If I'm at the 50, I'm gonna need to make four clicks. And if I'm at the 25, I'm gonna need to make eight clicks. So if you understand your corrective value, it makes zeroing much easier and helps to eliminate a lot of the frustration of trying to Kentucky windage it all in. So when it comes time to getting out to the range, now we're going to set up our zeroing station. And what I recommend is that you move the target into about the 10 yard line. On top of that, if you've already zeroed your iron sights, flip them up and co-witness. So you might actually be able to create a much easier zeroing time if you use something that's already been zeroed, the iron sights, and you adjust the optic to where it's sitting on top of that front sight post. That'll save you a little bit of work. Once you've done that, go ahead and do your zero at the 10 yard line. All we're looking for here is windage. All I want to make sure of is that at that 10 yard line that I have adjusted the windage as precisely as I possibly can. Unless there is significant wind outside of the range, the 10 yard line, I'm probably not going to have to do a lot of adjustments windage wise. If I'm shooting low at that 10 yard line, I'm not going to panic simply because I am going to be extending the distance and eventually the round is going to climb up to that particular zero range. Now, once I have done my 10 yard line, I'll push the target out to whatever that distance is that I'm going to zero, 25, 50, maybe even 100. And at that point, I'm going to take it really slow. One of the recommendations is to be patient with your zeroing. Try not to be in a rush. When you get out there, stabilize your shooting position as much as you possibly can. Use a bipod, sandbags, gear bag, whatever you can to minimize the human error in shooting. After that, I recommend that you make your first correction in a major sense. In other words, if I see that maybe I need to move it two inches, I might want to consider moving it two and a half inches. And the reason for that is if I move my bullet impact all the way to the other side of the aim point, that is going to tell me what my left and right limits are. And now I can make a minor correction on the second volley to really dial it in. What I'm trying to avoid is the little bitty steps to getting the dot where I want it to impact. If I can make a big correction and I overshoot, no problem. I now know where that right limit is and I can back it off to get it right inside that point of aim, point of impact. 
Two or three volleys is about how much it takes. My first volley is a major correction, second volley is a minor correction, and my last volley is confirmation only. What I want to do is I just want to make sure that all my corrections that I've dialed in are good. If I make a correction, I always want to go back and re-zero it or at least reshoot it to make sure that I dialed that correction in correctly. After that, what I recommend is anytime you go out to the range with a rifle, start your session with a zero confirmation. It takes maybe five rounds, maybe less if you're really, really dialed in, to be able to just reconfirm that zero, and then you can begin your rifle session. Anytime you add a new variable to your rifle, for instance, maybe I change the ammo that I'm shooting, maybe I'm going to work with a different magazine, maybe I've actually completely changed something on the rifle, like installed a new muzzle device, I definitely want to go ahead and re-zero at that point. If I find that there's no change or if I find that the impacts are acceptable for me, I'm good. Move on and continue to enjoy your day at the range. All right, I'm Jeff Gonzalez. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them down below. Until then, take care and stay safe.